Fakten TV. Dream time, but uh, I'm staying for many days. Uh, um, four of us working together to deal with this uh, pandemic. I hope everyone uh, will continue to keep safe. And, uh, so that we can continue with the fight. I want to thank all Rwandans, leaders, the health workers, everybody who has uh, registered their support for the effort to deal with this uh, situation. So, Without much to do, I'm happy to be with you to discuss anything that is on your minds and I'll also be able to tell you what is on my mind. Thank you very much, sir. We'll go straight away into the question. If everybody who has a question can raise their hand and when you take the microphone, if you can please introduce yourself and then get out. Azaria, we'll start with you. Go ahead, Kajir. Hello. Come on, continue. Not coming through. There's something. There's, uh, there's something to be worked on. I guess they're not getting you. not yet uh, in a position to start to fix these kinds of problems that we are not in to do that. Uh, 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 I 
Thank you, thank you. Um, now, we are in the second uh, since uh, we started dealing with the uh, COVID-19. Uh, so, uh, from the outset, the challenges seem to be insurmountable. I can talk about the dealing with the program has been carried for a several years and we learned from other of life. So we will be deliberately taking uh, step by step, looking at the data, looking at how to participate, how we also get involved in dealing with the problem, and so on. So many things come together in this step. Thank you, sir. The next question. Uh, there has been uh, some suggestions that uh, 
you can do even if you wanted to do it. money that has been made to uh, AU COVID Solidarity Fund and the other to CDC is a sort of uh, uh, misplacement of, of the effort uh, is not, uh, that is not uh, very true because we know we have run and of course to care of them to primarily they come fast. About it. But that also means you may uh, recall that there are other things being done for Rwandans as well. We, 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 we. But I think working together, uh, either as Africans, or whether it is the sub region or the continent, or even the international. You are not going to run away from the responsibility of making your own contribution, which in, in, in a sense, by the way, feeds back to you. Uh, if if CDC is doing well, the African Union is doing well, uh, in the end, it feeds back to us as London, we benefit from that as well. Uh, so to, to have contributed like many other countries did uh, to this two parties, I, I believe it's another cause that uh, in more countries need to contribute to. If we have a CDC that is working and is working for us well, that's what we want, that's what we expect, and that's what we benefit from. Uh, to have uh, an African Union, uh, working very well in this effort to fight the COVID-19. Uh, it's working well, we benefit, and uh, that's what we want. That is. So, 1 million, 500,000, 500,000, another US dollars. Well, it may sound a uh, bit uh, uh, in view, but uh, you put it in the hands of the uh, uh, but I think we are also organized more uh, funds for London uh, than the one million. In fact, maybe that's where we are even growing the one million from, uh, from the sources that have been mobilized. And there are more sources than one million than those who have contributed to the future. So I, I think it depends on how you want to proceed, uh, the way 
we will start this in, in, in the way we acted, uh, and I think uh, you will agree with me at the end of the day, there is more benefit from this collective uh, uh, effort than uh, the one million we put there. Thank you, sir. The next question, Albert. The, the first one, I think um, what we are seeing uh, happening, uh, you see many efforts uh, across the world. Uh, you, if you remember, some time back we had um, uh, a meeting of the G20 countries and the others were invited to, to participate. It was in the view of uh, trying to see how the world uh, can come together, including the rich countries, the not so rich, the poor countries, all together discussing uh, what needs to be done for each country, each region, or by everyone of those, and uh, together uh, Two things. One, dealing with the pandemic itself, when you eat him, and uh, strengthening and the building or the building, the health system, you can be thinking about the future, and so on and so forth. On the other hand, the discussion also being that how about beyond this pandemic? Because there will be a time when we will be beyond this pandemic. And it will have, of course, all this enormous damage to the economies of countries. So that, th those are the two major things that people are looking at. And uh, uh, later on, we have had a, a couple of uh, meetings, uh, Continental, uh, the African Union, uh, the Bureau of the African Union under the chair uh, person, uh, the President of South Africa, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, and uh, the Bureau of the AU and the other, again, heads of state invited for uh, different reasons to participate. It was, again, looking at everything through the range of Africa, uh, but, uh, linking with the rest of the world, where again we looked at the pandemic as was affecting us and how do we deal with it using the, also the collaboration with the other countries outside of Africa and then how do we bring in other actors, the private sector and for this mobilization for, against the pandemic. But how do we bring in everybody now 
to also prepare for and deal with the situation uh, when we are part of this uh, pandemic. Uh, you can see, therefore, these efforts building up, coming together, sharing the best practices, and uh, identifying uh, different places where uh, resources can come from, putting up different formulas as to how uh, different obstacles can be uh, addressed, and so on and so forth. So I think there is good progress. There is good progress in dealing with the pandemic, the country, the region, sub-region, continental, collaborations across. We are seeing that. The situation like Sabriachal, that has played part as the driver of what needs to be done uh, in this side of the pandemic, all playing their rightful role, and I think is a significant progress. Then we see the World Bank, IMF, African Development Bank, different institutions in Europe and America, different places, China, Russia, Canada, everyone, you know, saying through these uh, multilateral institutions and other institutions, how do we uh, utilize or mobilize resources to uh, help deal with this across the board, across the world. And how, how do we deal with the social economic situation that uh, uh, comes after that? So good progress on that, I think. The second part of the operation, um, you know, Every time this thing happens or, or comes up, reminds me of the long history we have been with the program. We are now 26 years into the program. The problem of the uh, Mercedes, uh, different uh, armed groups that have been born, and they, they, they some of them now have grandfathers and grand grandfathers, and they have continued to be born every time, everywhere. So, but I have always seen there is one constant. The one constant is the failure to deal with this problem. Uh, even if the discussion for the last 26 years has always been to deal with this problem. Uh, what is even worse is that a certain, I would say, certain people, I don't know how to call them, who should be actually responsible for dealing with this situation end up perpetuating the situation. Uh, and all this survival myth, rumors, all kinds of things we find anywhere, including surprising the experts, there are experts who have been operating in this region for the last 26 years. They carry the same story, the same, sometimes spread the same rumors, and other times spread even the same lies. And that is what we are now used to for the last 26 years without seeing actually an end. Uh, solution to this problem. Now, why am I saying I have heard the same story you are talking about you have heard. Let me start with the south, the southern part of the eastern economy. 
That is uh, Vira Nimembueva, Banyamirenge Viva, and you know, that whole region south of the south. You know, I am surprised that you have some of these experts who don't see what is there that is actually supposed to be seen by anyone who is there. But instead, they see what is not there. What I mean is, how could somebody be talking about Rwanda or RDS, Rwanda Defense Forces, in that part of the region, because they are not there. And this same person of these people don't see the very things happening there. Uh, through our intelligence collection, which we share, by the way, with uh, those who are even supposed to be dealing with the situation, because we feel it to them when we have corrected it, so that we can actually do what they are supposed to. Our intelligence collection tells us we have forces from the room. Government forces operating in that region. We have an, a number of rebel groups, you can't come to them easily, in that situation. We involve the wounded, uh, people from here, because all the groups uh, connected with that barrier are that kept breaking up in different pieces and we have those groups that have gone as far south to in those areas of Fiji and uh, have been operating in that region, uh, working together with the different Mai Mai groups and uh, then the other groups from Burundi on both sides fighting each other. It's, it's a cocktail. It's, it's, it's a mess. So, I don't know whether people are confusing genuinely or deliberately. The, the, the Rwandans that are said to be there and have been there for a long time are these offspring of FDRR, not RDF. These are two different things. There is not a single soldier of RDF that has grown that territory. Not a single one. I, I say to you, but, but some NGOs, some journalists are able to see attacking them, all kinds of things. But the government of the DRC knows the fact, knows that, knows that RDF, not a single soldier of RDF is there. They know those. I don't know what you want to say, I don't know what you ever want to say. So, please, take it from me, there is no single soldier in that part of the world. Now, you can come to the next. I'll tell you again something that is intriguing and into to the history of this problem. I'll mention to you that fortunately we have the government in the RFC that has come to agree to work with the region, the countries in the region, their neighbors, to try and resolve this problem that has been there for a bit. And uh, the government of the RFC, the current government, has been very helpful. Uh, in working with the countries in the region. According to some people, of course, that's not a good thing. The same people who create those stories like we have in the South. It's not a good thing that uh, the government of the DRC will be working with countries, neighboring countries, to deal with this matter because for some reason, it is a problem they want to preserve. Uh, so that uh, maybe it 
stayed for another 25 years. I don't know. And that's why they are putting pressure on them by creating these lies and saying, look, look, no, there's another group coming. So, but first, they don't talk about uh, <laughs> other countries. They talk about Rwanda all the time. That's okay. I have no problem with that. Because anyway, we are the ones who the bigger problem to deal with. Now, recently there was a problem in... Uh, let me first talk about that collaboration has resulted into... And I told you that we give information to our partners in the region, including the UN and others, the information we get about these activities. We have been giving information as well to the government of DRC, and in fact, they started acting on some of the information we gave them because they were also able to verify and see what was uh, growing in the North Kivu, and they started operating against these groups because there are, and they have all kinds of names that I don't want to them. When they started operations and based on this information and collaboration we had with them, now the whole thing comes against them again. It's like after acting against this group is is a crime in itself. And then a dynamic is set up internally to start questioning the policy of the government. They say, ah, you know, why do you see this Rwanda which is coming in and doing this? They are not complaining about the presence of F. Berera. They are not complaining about the havoc they cause to the people of the RSP. No, they are, co they are creating a myth and uh, some uh, kind of monster uh, of RDF having a process and going into the RSC to carry out operations. Nothing talked about even what they would be operating against if they cross. Now, recently, you saw the FDR laid an ambush on this uh, road in areas of Rutsuro. They killed these guards. Uh, who was in Zurunga, in Zurunga, massed in the, on the DRC side. There was only one mention once and about, you know, some f some rebels from Rwanda having killed the people, and that was it. That's not a big deal. It's not an issue. Uh, so you just make a mention it in the past. It's like these people have been made to feel entitled actually to to do whatever they want to do in the DRC and uh, if anybody raises anything about them. But the UN forces are there. In fact they were brought there to deal with that problem. I wish they had dealt with the problem who, who are dealing with the problem. They are not. So everything comes to be summarized and Rwanda getting involved in the RSC. That is the answer for every problem that is raised about. So, uh, my dear friend, uh, one, the RSC has been very helpful uh, because it's their territory and uh, the people in the RSC are the ones actually suffering on the hands of uh, uh, these rebel groups, maybe except those who work with them, some benefit from working with them. As you saw, it's not even the best just in the RSC, external. Somebody complains about Rwanda uh, being in the RSC, uh, operating against the FDRR and the preferred to call them refugees rather than FDRR. And they are doing that from abroad, and some of these people who are doing that are Rwandese who actually 
finance or support these groups to creating in DRC or they are supporters also who are not who are living in the who are from New York or America or wherever. So the whole thing keeps being a problem. And that explains why this problem has been there for the last 26 years. So probably gave you more than you expected or wanted, but that's the way I can keep Thank you, Mr. President. Next question, um, Kagawu. Eh, Mokoma Presa Republika, Mr. Kagawu, Marela Arbio, Suma. Sida Kusuma Nera Yimaya, Mujina, Kusuma Nera Yimaya, Mujina, Kusuma Nera Yimaya, 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 Kusuma ハロプラジェクトユーブダサイムのオフ。さっきのカリーに、ビビリナマクニアビリナカネ。次回で、ニアカ、イメ。それじゃあ、ちょっと待って、ビクビアムリガホンダイメージ。ナマ、ビクエ
mu mikorere ibyo wa yijana migambi wafashe ari byo wanuti nubundi bibikuriye guhinduka ntabwo ture yenda nkabahumirije rero buri ntambwe dutera tugenda tureba niba ijyanye n'igihe ijyanye n'uko twatekereje cyangwa se niba hari bindi twakongeraho bigahinduka ndumva nta 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 nkomyi ihari nta nzitizi dufite iyo kuba twatekereza ukundi ibyo twateguye tukabikora ukundi cyangwa se aho bigomba gukorwa nkuko byateguye nabwo bigakorwa nta dufite uburenganzira bwose bwo kubikora uko tubana n'icyo bidu Thank you, Mr. President. Next question from Fiona. Hello, Nancy. Uh, my name is Naringua Fiona Mutoni. I'm a journalist with CNBC Africa. Now, I just wanted to ask it in line with the previous question as well as part one of uh, Albert's question. What are some of the recovery plans for the economy that the government is currently work or working on? All right, as I said, we have to be dealing with the two things at the same time. We are dealing with this pandemic that continues to affect the whole world. So we are standing in the process that make sure that the, it has not continued to get into other things we are doing for, for a better future. But at the same time, as I said, while we deal with the pandemic, we deal, we are also thinking of how we deal with the conflict. Uh, on, on the normal lives of people, mm -hmm. whether it is at work, the employment, therefore it is uh, productivity, it's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of things that uh, have been uh, making our economy what it is. Now, we want to see business activity internally resume. We want to see how do we do business with the rest of the world, avoiding the problems that uh, would come along relating to the coronavirus, and so on and so forth. So all that comes into being by looking at a number of things. Uh, what the measure we are getting, for example, there is almost going to be, in a sense, some kind of uh, uh, contraction into the economy. Whoever was aiming at uh, maybe, like in our case, we are always looking at uh, our economy growing uh, in excess of 8% uh, in, in next year, for, I mean, for this year, for example, we are going to see it come down Maybe the estimates we are getting is around 3.5 percent. Now, that means, therefore, it has been hit already, or even going forward, some of the things won't be done the way we expected them to be done. And that's what we are we are looking at. So, how do we revive businesses? How do we revive the, our, our exports? How do we have our tourism uh, thrive again? It's going to be a slow process. And, and uh, so we, we are taking measures along these lines, how to really inject life back into the system and allow what was happening in the area of construction, the investments we are making in the area of the energy, mining sector, so, so as I said uh, from the beginning, we, we not only are looking at sector by sector and seeing how it is affected and what we need to do with that. Uh, the activities there, we are also looking at the resources required. How do we mobilize the resources to now get back into the system uh, as, as required as well. So it's, it's a, a comprehensive uh, plan, if you will, a 
I'm looking at every aspect and uh, prioritizing, of course, always. Prior to here to the people of Rwanda, how do they get back their life, economic, social life, and, and do that as well that we have already done? Thank you, sir. Do we have any other questions? Any questions from the house?
also maybe how easy and difficult has it been for the government to, to secure uh, the protective gears and then ventilators? And where, they, where have they been coming from? Thank you, Excellency. Uh, the people who are already at work uh, looking at each sector, as I say, it's not just one company or that is going to be favored against the other. It's looking at the situation holistically. Even uh, I, I think Rwanda has been talked so much about just because, I mean, people see it uh, more easily than uh, other things or need it to travel and so on. So the, the, that's how it has come up. But, Life, the economic life does not start uh, and end with the one there. It, it is a comprehensive thing. So what we are talking about, therefore, is looking at all sectors of our economy. Uh, I talked about businesses, different businesses, including small businesses. I've talked about uh, our uh, hospitality, the tourism sector. Uh, there are different uh, sectors that have been uh, talked about. Uh, so all are being looked at in detail. So uh, that's why I'm not comfortable just pulling out few things here and then the others that are left out may think they are not being considered, but that's not the case. So we are looking at the comprehensive thing a comprehensive picture in this regard. So we will um, definitely uh, be coming up and, and we will get to know uh, the details of that. Uh, now, on the side of uh, mobilization of resources, as I said, we are mobilizing resources in so many ways, and that will include uh, when it means uh, going anywhere, whether it is borrowing or it is uh, sometimes begging. And so it is a mix of many things. You beg, you borrow. And so. But we, we, I think we are seeing that both efforts uh, are being productive. Where we have asked for where we go to borrow or where we shall go to borrow if we decide that. I think the market has been favorable to us because of how we, we've been performing in our economy. They may be able to lend us. So we, we, uh, but all this will come uh, after, you know, when we have analyzed correctly what we need to borrow for or what we need to ask for. For, for, for money from where and for what. So it, it's, uh, that's how it is. Thank you, Mr. President. Next question from Lo. Uh, my name is Lau Poulard. I work for RFI and Le Monde. Uh, I have a question about uh, the death of the singer Kizito Mihigo. Uh, because different NGOs have questioned uh, the fact that he might have committed suicide. And some representatives of the international community have asked for an independent investigation. So I was wondering what uh, maybe you could answer to their concerns. Thank you very much. Well, I don't think, uh, well, it depends on what is going to satisfy you because I, 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 I'm more so informed uh, there have been explanations given not, not by one person, by many, and on several occasions. So if you are still asking me to explain that, it means you are not satisfied. Uh, or those NGOs you are talking about, or whoever is not satisfied, I'm sorry, that means they will never be satisfied. So I, I don't think uh, I can satisfy you either. So please, uh, you have to make your mind whether you are satisfied by those who explained it so many times before 
uh, unless you are telling me you don't be explain, you don't be satisfied if I explain it. But if I explained it the same way you have already had, I'm sure that may add up to not being satisfied again. So can we put that question to rest? Thank you, sir. Next question from Invest. Nimele, <laughs> World Health Organization icyo navuga ko ari je ari abandi mu buyobozi bw'iki gihugu ari muri rusange twemera amabwiriza ya science y'ubumenyi kurusha indagu cyangwa ubupfumu cyangwa eh uh, y'abantu bavuga gusa kubera ko ari ko abishatse byo ibyo turabyirinda eh tugenera ku bimaze kugaragara rero ikijyanye na covid 19 ni virus ari bice ari haracyari ibintu bitaramenyekana neza naba naba bizobereye mu ndetse eh afite ubumenyi buhanitse mu ari mu byubuvuzi ari mu umenye bujyanye na za virus zitandukanye ari byinshi ari ari ibyo bashaka shaka ari ibyo bataramenya ari ibyo bimaze kumenyekana no mu buryo bwo kuyirinda ndetse no kuyirwanya bifite aho biganisha aho niho twibanze cyane ariko nibyo bikiraho mu Rwanda narwo hari byinshi yarageza gukora niba warabonye nabonye hari abantu bagenda bakora ibintu bifasha mu bintu by'ubuvuzi rabo nabonye bakora za ventilators abandi nabonye bakora wenda bizo bazaba abanyarwanda bakoze ibishobora kuyitima ndetse nabandi babizobereyemo bazi ubushakashatsi barashakisha nabo nk'abandi cyangwa bakoranye nabagenzi babo umushaka kumenya imiterere y'i virus no muti wayivura cyangwa se wa urukingo ibi byose ni ibintu abantu bafatanya kwisi hose ariko no rwanda ntabwo rwasigaye inyuma ariko uyu munsi ntacyo mfite nakubwira ngo bageze kuri ibi yubuvuze kubyo kwirinda mu buryo bw'urukingo cyangwa iki ibyo ntabwo abanyarwanda barageraho ntabwo nabikubwira ntabyo nzwe ibya Madagascar rero nabyo mbibona nkuko wabibonye eh wahitamo kubyemera mu burenganzira bwawe cyangwa se ukabigiraho ikibazo kavuga utereka dutegereze turebe aho byakoze ni cyavuyemo eh nange narabibonye ariko narabyugira ariko gena kubwiye ko cyane cyane byageza gukurikiza no kumvira science sobanutse nkuko tuyizi eh ubwo ariko nibyo bindi tuzajya tubyumva turebe ikibirimo icyari Thank you sir next question from Kemo 
you, Mr. President. My name is Iklema Ourenjima, and I work with Reuters. My question is uh, about what you recently said, that Africa as the whole continent needs $100 billion to help deal with COVID-19 effects. Uh, how much exactly does Rwanda need, uh, and how much will you raise it? And the uh, second question is about if whether uh, Rwanda is, is negotiating with its creditors uh, to postpone the payment. Thank you. Yes. Yes, the, the experts uh, have told us that uh, we need around that 100 billion, uh, and they even say possibly more. These are experts saying who have gone into details, specifically to deal with uh, uh, this pandemic, to, to get out of it. We need more to rebuild later on. Uh, for, for, for Rwanda, I think if you gave us uh, a, a billion of that, we would be happy to, 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 to try and uh, get started on something decent. So there is no problem with that. And uh, yes, we have been in touch with the uh, lenders. Uh, and relating to the debt problem, uh, there has been a lot of argument going around. Uh, people asking, and Africans, we are all asking generally, instead of uh, paying money that is due for the money we borrowed some time back, if, if they could put a standstill on the debt, for at least two years. That money will be retained and reinvested in our systems, therefore, to fill those gaps that exist. Uh, so that is that is going on. And the sum of the people who have been approved, those who have been approved, those who have been approved, those who have been approved, My name is Vanna Namata. I work for the East Africa. First question is related to regional integration. Current capacity as chair again. We have seen that uh, due to the pandemic, international cooperation is an authority. But to what extent, despite the current frustrations we have had uh, trying to put together a meeting, what could the region do differently? Because despite what you try to do within the national borders, we continue to see that the case with the truck borders, if the region is not working together, we still have problems for a very long time. So going forward, what can we do differently? My second question is in relation to Rwanda's development strategy. 2015, uh, for Rwanda, had been placed the very focus on mice meetings, events, and conferences. And what we are seeing as a result of the pandemic is that there is a real threat that revenue from these sectors will take long to rebound. We see the need to revise the country's strategy at this point. We planning to raise the revenue to fund the kind of debt that we're getting at the moment. Thank you, Your Excellency. Well, the, um, for the East African community, and in that sense, regional integration, that remains important, no matter what. So we, we may fail to do this or to achieve this, but 
it remains important that we keep cooperating more closely uh, even than ever before. There's no question about it. So we, we will find ways of overcoming our failures and our weaknesses. That remains the most important thing. Uh, and, and, and the points you, you've raised, for example, when you've seen how truck drivers, as an example, affect countries, because they are coming from one country to another and, was, and then back and so on, and what they carry with them as it relates to the pandemic, of course, uh, is very significant. We need to deal with that. And there is not a single country that can manage that on its own. Uh, so it is an imperative. You may postpone it, you may delay it, you may fail to do it, but it remains important. It remains important that uh, we find ways to, to, to work together, and we will find ways to work together. Uh, so what you are asking, what do we need to do differently? I don't think we even need to do anything differently. We just need to do what we all along agreed we should be doing, and that is working together. What, what, but we, we, we have had weaknesses in that which we need to, to overcome. Uh, now, on, on uh, the second question, as I, I said it earlier that even if there was no pandemic, but in implementing your strategy, you always keep taking that, the steps you take, with the results you're expecting. If that's not being achieved, then you find ways of tweaking it and maybe changing some things here and there. But this time around, we have this pandemic, which is uh, obvious, and, and the weight of it, and the impact. But at the same time, we are also aware it has affected every country. And for my work, yes, people to be able to travel and so on and so forth. But it has affected everyone, so there won't be people coming not only Rwanda, but the whole region and beyond. So there is no movement. It's like there is lockdown across the world. So, to say, therefore, in the area strategy, I'm going to replace my with this. Maybe it is too early. Because everything else, even what you are thinking of replacing it with, has also been affected. Because the economy is built on people and activities they get involved in. So everything has frozen. So we will therefore wait a little bit to move forward, even when things start unlocking, and we see in the same way, what is it that is working at what time, or is there anything that you can replace it with? But to say it now, I think, would be too early, in my view, uh, because everything else has been affected. Uh, you can see the, 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 the trucks that were moving as the only ones in the world, <laughs> are also being affected. So, since there's nothing that is not being affected. So we, we are dealing with a very complex situation, but uh, for the strategy we have had, we will be careful and deliberate how we alter it or change anything that we needs to be changed. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. 
it's okay, we may take the last two questions, as most have asked. Mm. I have a question from Gatete. for the opportunity. In 1973, Arab oil producing countries declared an embargo on oil. Within one year, in 1974, when they reopened it, the price of oil had increased by 400%. Arab countries became excessively rich and they were able to raise capital. They, they declared the embargo on the on the on the production and export of oil. Allowed the oil crisis of 1973. Just the yeah. One year later, when they production and export, they had increased the price of oil by 400 percent. In the spirit of how what shall it take for Africa to negotiate the price of commodities? If we have massive reserves, over 70 percent of the of the world commodities in Africa, these resources are going to be needed to stop this industrialization, the production of gold. There is a lot of work to be now to look at the many sides. But I need to make sure to say that discussion doesn't come now because now we are in a different situation. I would I'd rather we discuss it when we are in a good place, we are in a good position. That's when we start talking about it. But we see that this man has the entire struggle that is happening. Because the one we are facing, the pandemic, and the 
at the wrong time, and it will give you a very painful result. So maybe let's think of that in the future. Just, just a quick follow-up, if, if I may. The controversy we've seen with Dr. Okay. And the there is something in the, in the communication. Is either here or your microphone is getting. Again, some countries in the world have been trying to scapegoat the problem of their way they have been dealing with the pandemic. The World Health Organization and the Federal has come up strongly to support this. How I'd like to get your take on where things are at the moment in regards to how the World Health Organization is being supported or undermined in response to the pandemic internationally. Uh, I think, I, 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 given the magnitude of the problem we are facing of the pandemic across the world, I am of the strong view that this is not the right time to create or bring up these kinds of problems. I think they will take, if we do that, it will take all the effort we should be putting to deal with the pandemic and divert it to something else, and therefore we will lose the battle. So my view is, even from what I have seen uh, from the beginning up to this moment, I'm not aware of anybody or country that would stand there and say, for me, I've been doing things perfectly well. The rest are wrong. I, I don't know of anyone or any country that can claim that. I think all of us have demonstrated some kind of weakness or another, even given what everybody says in this world. So maybe we need to humble ourselves a little bit and work together, pull together, deal with the problem. And once we are through, people are free to raise any questions they want and say, no, whoever you want to hold accountable, you can hold them accountable. I'm sure there are ways of holding people accountable uh, whenever that right time comes. So why don't we do that? Why? I, I think that is the best way we can approach it. Let's deal with the pandemic. Let's pull together as much as we can. When we get over it, we can... Uh, now sort out that problem. So that's where we are. Thank you, Mr. President. To take the last question from Simon. You are Mr. President. Uh, I'm uh, Simon Volpa, President for AFP and France 24. Uh, I hope you will hear me well. Uh, we have seen a number of Rwandans arrested for not respecting, respecting the lockdown and the public health measures. Uh, but so far, authorities haven't shared precise sanctions uh, for those viola violating the lockdown. And I would like to know what are the exact sanctions uh, for the offenders? Well, I think uh, some of them have just been uh, arrested and uh, later on released, warned and uh, released or fined and released. Uh, at least I haven't had anybody hung because of, I uh, haven't had anyone uh, because of uh, violation of the rules of lockdown. But definitely there has been uh, enforcement 
uh, in making sure that people don't break the rules they know they have been told about. So, in fact, uh, there have been uh, light measures uh, so far in terms of uh, uh, breaking the rules of lockdown. Some of them, I'm told, have been locked up during uh, the time they have arrested the day or two and they are released the next day. So others have just been warned and released and so on and so forth. So I, I, I haven't heard of anybody given a six month sentence or, or one year sentence for, for that. It's, it's just some way of making sure that uh, uh, some discipline that is required is, is, is uh, realized uh, going forward. Thank you, Mr. President. With your permission, we can end here. Mm -hmm. Nobody still has your... There's somebody there. Mr. President. Asinta, next question to you. Hmm? Asinta? There are two. There's one here, then there's another in the corner. I don't see their names. Do you have them on your screen also? The one who hasn't yet. Sir, so, if you can please ask your question. My question is for the President of the Republic of Korea. We have a lot of people who have been in the country. We have a lot of people who have been in the country. Sabawazamu <laughs> Inganda, Inganda, the the if you call it Zahungavanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanikovanik